Good morning, everyone. Okay, so yesterday I posted a sneak peek at the card that I'm going to make today. And it features the Love Blossom stamp set. And I'm just going to share this in my classroom and then I'll get going. So um, the Love Blossom stamp set is part, is on special this month. It's a special stamp set um, designed just for this campaign and it's called Love Blossoms and it's available to purchase until the end of the month. There is um, a card workshop that um, Head Office designed and these are the cards that it creates, but, um, <coughs> sorry, I've been super sick this week. And so I'm going to try not to cough through the whole thing, but, um, so I thought I would just show you, I've been playing around with it. And so this week I'm going to show you a couple of different things that I've done with it and we'll have some fun. So this is the stamp set. It's an E size stamp set. So it's two, basically two D-size stamp sets together. And so one whole side is phrases, and then the other side is this lined image with a fill-in um, image also for the flowers. So here, it, we're going to have some fun today. I tried to do something a little bit different. So we're going to do a reverse stencil technique to create the background. And we're going to watercolor with our inks. And then we're going to emboss the title onto title, the sentiment onto the card. So a few things have to dry. So I have done one image before that I will actually use on the card, but I'm going to show you how I created the technique here on the card. And it's all done just with the inks. Sorry. Oh, here. That's just, is that better? So I cut out with our, I think we'll do this first because this takes the longest to dry. So I cut out um, on my Cricut. Um, I think this one is from Art Booking and I've used our um, stencil film. And so there's lots of things you could do with this. Um, you could use the texture paste and create a background. Um, you could uh, rub your ink through it. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, the reverse stencil technique on it. So I have grabbed my all-purpose mat here. Just because we're going to be inking and spraying and we're going to get messy here. So. I'll just set this one aside a little bit. And so I just decided to make it easy. I would kind of stick to the same colors as are in the actual workshop. So I've grabbed, I don't need my black right now. So I've got Pixie and I've got thistle and I've got charcoal. And like I said, we're gonna do the background first and then we will um, color the image. So for this, what I've done is I've got my stencil, I've got it on my all-purpose mat. I have a piece of just plain cardstock you could also use watercolor paper if you wanted it to absorb more of the ink and water. But this is just a piece of white daisy cardstock and it's cut to the same size as my card front, just a standard card front. So I'm going to start with my lightest color, which will be my pixie. And I just have a piece of uh, round the round foam and I just cut them up. And I just staple a piece of cardstock on here and write the name so that um, I know uh, what color I've used on it. 
and I'm just going to randomly rub this onto the stencil, starting with my lightest color and working to my darkest color. And then we're going to use the same inks to um, color our image also. So uh, I think that'll be good for my cookie for right now. There we go. And now I'm going to grab my thistle. Same thing. I have a little sponge with the word thistle on it. So I'm just going to have some of my coffee so I don't lose my work here. That's why I need more coffee today, guys. Yes, everybody is fighting getting sick in my house because next week is um, school break. So it means skiing and vacation time. So but also typically everybody in my house always gets sick right before school break. So my husband and son are skiing. Okay, I think that's good for my thistle. So everybody's hyped up on cold medication. So then my last color, I'm just gonna use the darkest, the charcoal and I will probably there we go. So I'm just kind of filling in the last little spot. I know it's probably hard to see, but okay, so I've kind of got stuff everywhere. Now, I just have a spray bottle and it's just got water in it. And like I said, I just have a plain piece of white daisy cardstock. And I'm just spraying my stencil. And of course, I'm running out of water, but there we go. And then I'm just gonna lay my piece of white daisy cardstock down. And I'm just gonna cover it up with a paper towel and I'll just sop up the extra. So everyone will look slightly different. And like I said, this one's still super wet. So I'm just going to set it aside to dry, but it was literally as easy as that. And now you've got background paper that perfectly matches however you want to um, color your stamped image. So, and I'll just run this under water after clean it up now i'm just going to set this aside over here ish and i'm just going to move to a different spot on my mat okay so then i have my water brush and i have my those same colors and we are just going to color in our image. So lots of people love to watercolor. You can use watercolor pencil crayons or watercolor paints, um, or you can just watercolor with our inks. So you can, with your mat, just smush some ink down onto your mat, or you can actually just pick it up in the lid too, and I just have one of our water brushes. And I'm just going to use the fern and color in 
the leaves. Except for, I think I wanted to do this image. So I just, when I get something like this that I know I'm gonna to wanna to play with, I'll just stamp it. And then when I have some time, you can sit and color it. And I almost want kind of like a messy watercoloring um, look. So like I said, I'm just picking up a little bit of the ink in the coordinating colors on my water brush. And it'll keep going until you don't have any more of the pigment left on your, in your, uh, the bristles of your brush. So like I said, I just kind of want like the wispy watercolor kind of look. So there we go. And then just clean off your brush in between colors. So that I did the leaves with the fern. And now I will do some of the flowers with the pixie. So I'll just do The, in the example that I posted the sneak peek of, I used um, slightly different colors. So for my lighter color, I used um, the sugar plum, like the color of the year. And for my purple, I think I used uh, pansy. So this is pansy and then this is sugar plum. And I think I used fern for that, for the leaves. But for this one, I decided to stick with just the colors that are highlighted in the workshop. So, and depending on how much, how watery you want them. You can water them or like thin out the ink more or less. This is a super easy um, way to watercolor without having to use watercolor paint. And you know, then you're getting an absolute perfect match to whatever you are painting. Oh, sorry, they're going off here. It's just hard because now I have the color way up high. Okay, and so I'm just gonna do, so you could see it's, it's drying. And as it dries, the color get, is getting darker. So now I'm going to put some thistle down. And I'll just color in my big one. I really don't need that much, but that's okay. And if you want it more watered down, you can always um, squirt out some of the water from your water brush thin it out more. And I always just have kind of a paper towel in case I want to sop up if I have too much water. And I'm just kind of like I said really quickly just coloring it. I maybe should have painted one to used before, huh? but that's okay. And I'm just gonna use more of my concentrated color at the bottom of the leaves. And like I said, guys, this is just super rough coloring because I don't want you to be on here for a crazy long time. But I thought that the card turned out super pretty. That's why I decided to do 
the live. So there we go. That's all I'm going to do for the color. Again, I'm just going to clean off my brush. Now, I'm actually just not going to lay this color down. I'm just going to use the lid. So your other option is to just squeeze the ink into your lid a little bit and then use the lid as your palette. So I just want a super light shadow all around my card, my, my floral arrangement, just so that it's not the stark white. And I'm going to cut most of it off so it doesn't really matter. But you can see, the I'll hold it up in a second, you can see the difference that it actually makes just to add a little bit of color into it. So you can see here, it just makes it look stand out so much more than just here where it's just the stark against the watercolor paper. Like I said, normally I would spend a little bit more time and be a little bit more careful, but And I think I'm going to fussy cut it out anyway. So there we go. Okay, so I'm trying not to put my image back in. Okay, I'm gonna just push this, pull this out and move it behind me so that I don't drop my paper back into it. Hopefully that uh, doesn't spill off. Anyway, okay. So now I have my colored image. And like I said, these are the colors that I'm using for this one. The charcoal, the thistle, the pixie, and the fern. I'll just leave those up there like that. Okay, so then I... This one says, thankful for all you do. And then inside it says, I appreciate you more than you'll ever know. So let's do the sentiment now. I have cut out already another um, card. So this is the lilac color and it's just a top folding card. So I've cut it out at 11 by four and a quarter. And then my I've cut down my card front so it's four by five and a quarter and we will just add that on here in a second with that so let's now we're going to cut out my add the sentiment so I have the same sentiment on here but let's see maybe we should put something different Uh, okay, maybe we'll do this one. My heart breaks. My heart breaks with you at this difficult time. Unfortunately, we all need sentiment cards. Uh, yeah, sympathy cards. Okay, so. Does appear I have not used the sentiment yet. So I'm just going to make sure it's going to fit and figure out how I want it on here. So I've actually cut the vellum out bigger than I need it. So I think we'll do it like that. Okay, so I want, because I'm going to um, emboss this on here, I'm going to add everything 
onto my block at the same time. There we go. Okay, so I just have my little Fiskars mat and my antistatic pouch. And let's get some so I think I'm gonna stick with the gold. So I'm my gold embossing powder and my Versamark. So your Versamark's just gonna make the vellum super sticky so that all of the embossing powder will stick to it. So you just want to make sure that you get it good and inked up. And I'm just going to kind of line it up lower so that I can maybe cut a little bit off the top. It's super hard to see without being able to look through, but let's hope we got a good image there. So I just keep my embossing powders in um, like a reusable container, and that way just everything falls back in and I don't have to worry about it flying all over the place. So I'm just going to pour it over my vellum. And that's looking pretty good. Okay, we're gonna just get noisy for a second. Sorry, I probably should have actually warmed this up before I started. <laughs> so I'm just gonna make sure that it's nice and warm before I start. And then I'm gonna actually start heating the um, image from underneath just so it warps just a little bit less. So as soon as it starts to turn and it doesn't take long, you're good. There we go, and that's so pretty. So now it's all stuck there, it's not going anywhere. Oh, let's just do a little bit more here down at the bottom. If you kind of turn it in the light, you can see it happens so quickly. There we go. Okay, so I thought on this background piece now, it's semi-dry here. So I think I would like to splatter it a little bit with the um, gold shimmer brush. So I'm just going to, I should have done this while I still had my mat up here, but I'm just gonna try and find a clean spot here. I'm just going to wipe some of this away so that I don't end up with it all over myself because that's exactly what's going to happen. I'm just going to move some off to the side here. Okay. I actually have a second mat. I just can't see it right at the second. So I'm going to just take So I have my background already and I have my shimmer brush and I just want to flick some of the gold onto the background just to add a little bit of sparkle. 
you can do it lots of different ways. Like you could do it just like I did. You can also drop some bigger drops on. So if you just put a little bit extra onto your mat and just lay your brush down onto your background, you're gonna get slightly bigger drops. I just thought that was kind of just a pretty little touch to add in there, just for a little bit more sparkle. Okay, now I'm gonna just roll this up and move it out of my way. And I'll just run it under water and clean it all up. It's super fast to clean up. And you don't end up with mess everywhere. Okay, so now back to everything I got going on here. So there we go. And then we're gonna have this here. So I'm just gonna cut this down just slightly, I think. Move my sponges out of the way. So I just want so it'll go right across the front. So I'm going to cut it at four and a quarter. And then I think I can trim it down a little bit. So this is like one and three quarters I've got here. Okay. And now I'm just going to quickly cut out my image here. So I'm just going to leave just a little bit of a border. And I'm just going to fussy cut around it. And like I said, the I think that the charcoal shadow, it's more, um, it makes it just so that it doesn't look quite so stark. And then here, I actually think I'm not going to cut in too far. So it just kind of makes it look a little more realistic. But you don't have to do that at all. And there's so many different ways to... Um, like I said, color this stamp set and they're all, they all turn out beautiful. So I think maybe that'll be my other live. We'll just play around with different ways to color this image. So I just kind of chop out the big parts of the background that I don't want there. Cause I'm just going to lay it down onto the background. And then I wanted, I want a straight edge because I'm going to just add it on the top of that vellum. Just like this. So that is how it's going to go together. And then I have some white and gold twine. So and then I think I'm going to use the I Heart Us sequins onto this one. So let's put this together. So it will flatten out once it's a little drier. So um, I will just come back. Because this one's just slightly damp. So I'll just put lots of adhesive on it and then I'll actually put something on top of it to help flatten it out. But I don't, you guys obviously, don't, I don't want to wait for that. So let me 
center correspond. There we go. Just going to try and help it a little bit. Like I said, I'm just going to lay something on top of it after and it'll be fine because it is still quite damp. Okay, so then I'm going to adhere the vellum and all I'm going to do is I've got the tiniest glue dots that we have here, the micro ones, and I'm going to just add them on the outer edge where it's going to touch the lilac um, cardstock. And then I'm just going to put a few on some of the bigger parts of the wording. So I can just pick one up and they're so tiny. So where there's lots of script, it'll totally be hidden underneath and it just gives it a couple more spots to stick down. Because vellum can be kind of tricky to hide. And because I also know that I'm going to run the twine up here, you could also hide more up there if you wanted. So I'll just do the outer edge like this. So I think I will go above. I guess I should double check how high this is going to be. So I'm going to add my adhesive onto the back here. And I'm going to stick everything down all at the same time. I'm just going to slightly tuck my flowers just underneath and stick them down. And I use the Tombow because I think it's with the watercolor paper, obviously it's heavier. So I just want to make sure that it is good and stuck. And like I said, once I put something on top of it to let help it dry flat, then um, also that will be helpful. So now you just wrap it around however many times you want. my glue dots out of the way and the rest of my twine out of the way. So like I said, I use the white and gold twine on here. I really like it. It's quite, um, not dense is not the right word, but I quite like the thickness of it. It's very nice to tie. It lays nicely. So This, the stamp set from Love Blossoms also has a great um, sentiment to stamp onto the back of your cards. So you could add that. I will probably pick something to stamp on the inside, but I won't make you guys watch me do that because it's really just, I've just cut out a liner quarter of an inch smaller than the card 
for the inside. Just gonna fray my edges here. There we go. I'm just gonna move these out of the way. And then I thought I added the gold glitter gems onto this one, but I think I'm going to add, oh yes, the white. They're like iridescent um, sequins from the I Heart Us sequin pack. So there's four different colors. There's like a yellow, um, purple and then a mint but I've picked out there's like these uh, iridescent white ones and they look beautiful on here line And they're adhesive back, so they, they stick themselves. You don't have to add a glue dot to these ones. But you could also use the loose sequence if you'd prefer. So there we go. There's the original one. And then here is the one I made today. And there you go. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. And as always, have a great day, guys. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.